Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, we're going to discuss a new library feature of C++20 called Bind Front. If you're familiar at all with the C++ functional header, you may be aware that over the years we've had many different ways of binding arguments to function calls. There's been bind, which was added in C++11 that comes directly from boost. There was unary function, binary function. These things were weird base classes for some things. Binder first, binder second, bind first, bind second, member function. Uh, you know, it's just like all over the place. And most of them have been replaced by features that came in C++ 11, 14, 17, 20 with our lambdas. Really, there's been very little use for them. And some people even argue that standard bind is itself uh, outdated as soon as it was released, perhaps, and that it should have never been added to the standard because lambdas gave us the same functionality. And you can see more about that in my avoiding standard bind episode that I recorded a very long time ago. But there is a new bind function that has been added in C++20 called bind front. And now according to the CPP reference description here, this is actually perhaps intended to replace standard bind in many use cases, as noted here. But it doesn't have all of the same flexibility of standard bind, and to be fair, that's probably not really necessary anyhow, because standard bind uh, does really a lot of things that it perhaps doesn't need to do. But for the sake of this episode, we're just going to discuss what bind front is. And if you saw one of my recent episodes on lambdas about in C++20, then this will look a little familiar, but we didn't quite take it all of the way. I'm just going to forward declare this function this time. I'm not going to give it a body. And in some ways, this is better for us to be able to really see what the compiler is having, actually having to generate. So in this case, I have bound the first two variables to 1 and 2, the first two function arguments. That is, i will be 1, j will be 2, and then when I call it, I am passing 3 to it. And we know, if you've been watching these videos for a while, that edi is where the first parameter is going to go, esi is where the second parameter is going to go, and we rarely talk about the third parameter, but edx is where it's going. So we can kind of rearrange these things a little bit and get a better idea of what the compiler is actually doing here. So we can see EDI has been replaced with 3, ESI with 2, etc. Now if I wanted to actually do this and return these values, we really shouldn't be surprised that the compiler can do all of this at compile time. So perhaps we can give it something else to uh, work with that is an unknown here. And we should be able to see that, yes, it's going to add the first parameter here. This is argc to the value 5, which is not surprising because 3 plus 2 equals 5. So that's what bind front does. It lets you bind as many of the front arguments as you want to. Now, if I did this, the program's ill-formed because I'm calling it with this argument, and that doesn't make any sense. It should just add 3 plus 2 plus 1. And on the other hand, if I bind just the 3, then I should be able to do something like this and pass it two parameters. Because, again, we are calling a function that is expecting three parameters total. So I have passed in three, and then argc twice, and one. And as we can see, the compiler is able to optimize that here to the value four. That's three plus one plus rdi plus rdi. rdi and rdi are both the first integer parameter passed into argc here, which is into main, which is argc. So this argc plus argc plus four is what it ends up being and the compiler is able to optimize all that. That's 
very easy for these compilers to do. So this bind front function is one that is coming in C20. And if you subscribe and look forward to an upcoming episode where I show some way that bind front could be implemented in C20, so be sure to subscribe and like this video.